Hey guys, I'm ZSH Plays. Welcome back to Tekton Zoo. As you may have guessed, today we're going to be building a habitat for the Pezhevalsky's horse. I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm getting better at it. And we're going to be building that habitat right here in the new mountain area of the zoo. So Pezhevalsky's horse, uh, that's my pronunciation and I'm sticking to it, um, is a very famous animal uh, as it was completely extinct in the wild and was then successfully reintroduced after breeding programs taking place all over the world, including at one of my favorite zoos, London Zoo here in England. Um, and they live, or they, they lived, the last place that they lived before they went extinct um, was on the steppes of Mongolia. So big grassland kind of plains, um, often surrounded by mountains. Um, and I thought they'd be a really good animal to sort of round out the mountain area of the zoo and lead us from the snow leopards down towards the the restaurant and the primates and the uh, non-mountain area of the zoo. So these guys are going to have a really big paddock. I think this is the uh, second biggest habitat in the zoo. I've not checked but I'm pretty sure apart from the cheetah conservation centre there's nothing bigger than this. I want them to have loads of space um, being wild horses, you don't want them sort of cooped up in a little habitat. Um, so that's a bit of a challenge with the style of this zoo. I don't really do big open habitats. So what I've decided to do is build something inspired by Tecton's bear um, ravine at Dudley Zoo, which is one of their sort of fairly typical circular structures. Uh, it's actually where I got the inspiration for the Grand Plaza from. Um, sort of walls of the Grand Plaza are based on the same design but um, it's not actually a complete circle it's a sort of a not even a half circle like a quarter circle uh, built into a hill so people can walk up it to look down at the bears in their ravine um, and I really like that design they don't use it for bears these days it's way too small but I decided to make a much bigger version of that so I've built this sort of circular construction and then deleted three quarters of it so we've just got this quarter here and this is going to be one of the main viewing areas for the guests. They'll be able to get up here from the plaza in the middle of the mountain area, which we're going to be building later, um, and then from the restaurant as well. And then there'll be more sort of traditional viewing that isn't raised up on a stand like that at the front of the habitat as well. I'm going to put a little tiny little forest in here, just a few evergreens to give it a nice backdrop, um, give it more of a slightly mountainous feel but there's going to be very few trees in the habitat itself because the environment that the Persia Valsky's horse <laughs> lives in is, um, like I say, like a grassland plains, not a lot in the way of uh, trees there. Um, it's going to slope down by necessity really from the um, snow leopard and Japanese macaque habitats down to the restaurant, but I'm going to do it in such a way that there's a quite a large area of flat terrain in the middle because obviously that is what the, uh, the horses would have in the wild um, and I'm basing the look of the inside of the habitat slightly on the um, habitats that they live in in the Highland Wildlife Park which I was lucky enough to visit a few months ago um, there's a big rock in the middle which I really liked so I've just recreated that here with a few of the uh, the rocks put some soil around it and I'll drop a little decal on it as well just to make it look a bit more interesting um, and then we will work on the rest of the habitat. So like I said, I want it to be nice and smooth, this slope with a flatter area in the middle. Um, and then I'm gonna use this sort of natural terrain, which has been um, adjusted many times over the course of the zoo. This was sort of my dumping ground, this area here, where I drop in blueprints and things like that when I was building stuff. So the terrain has been sort of raised and lowered loads of times without me really doing it on purpose. So it's got a nice natural look to it. And there's a little hollow there, so I thought I'd put a pool in for them. Not that they can swim in or anything, just a little sort of water area. And I've made that look a bit dirty as well, because that's kind of what you see in zoos, unless it's a really sort of up front area of water that they want people to look at. And then I'm going to use loads of the new conservation pack, meadow flowers, uh, Yorkshire fog grass and things like that to just bring it to life. So it's not just the sort of standard long grass do some terrain painting uh, to make it look nice and natural. That is the scratching post tree. And then we'll hide one of the enrichment items in this tree and then we'll put the barriers in. So uh, I'm gonna be using the in-game barriers for the majority of this habitat, this nice sort of very generic uh, fence piece. 
this will do the majority of the habitat and then the rest of it will be null barriers because we've already got these concrete walls in uh, that I built. We'll be putting paths into the gantry that I've created there so the guests actually walk up there and that's where some of them will look at the horses from. We'll drop a uh, vista point in as well to make sure that the guests go up there and then I'll replace the fence posts with some white concrete of course but apart from that we're just going to use the barriers because I think they work really nicely for a um, hoofstock kind of paddock like this so yeah put some of this white concrete in just so it doesn't look too generic and give it slightly more of a tacked on feel but yeah apart from the the gantry at the back this is going to be quite a um, like a realistic sort of paddock that you would see in a modern zoo rather than uh, a crazy modernist construction just didn't really feel right for the horses to have like I say a sort of um, fairly small enclosed space uh, we'll cover up the path with some plaster so that looks nice and seamless uh, and then get the path all the way around so the guests can walk around here and see the horses from uh, wherever they like really the end of the path here we're going to build a stable for the horses so the way I've built this I want it to look kind of like this would have been um, in an original building like back in the 1930s um, maybe even for Pajalti's horse I'm not sure what would have been here um, and then, it, then it's been modernized so that um, it's not like this giant lump of white concrete anymore put a lot of wood paneling and plants and things like that in it um, as they do in lots of modern zoos when they've got an old building um, that's not hugely important uh, not something the guests are going to see too much of so rather than spend millions knocking it down and creating a whole new one um, they'll just sort of put wood panels and things like that on it to make it look a bit more modern um, clear up the inside and then put some stables in so we're going to have four um, Pejoralski's horses in here um, and then they'll be breeding as well so we'll have some foals um, but I'm just going to make four stables uh, presumably the foals would go in the stable with their mother um, put a back on it as well and uh, make it go away green so it can't really be seen and then we'll put the wood panelling on using some more of the conservation pack pieces I really like this curved piece um, goes really nicely round this and gives it a really seamless kind of look and uh, or it will do once I rotate these I don't know why I put those in vertically um, I'll change those now and um, yeah really nice subtle look to it the idea is that the building won't really be that noticeable once I've finished covering it in wood and plants and stuff it should just sit at the back of the habitat not really be something that catches the eye or something that um, the guests would be looking at when they should be uh, looking at the horses um, it takes a while to uh, sort of line everything up and get it perfect um, but we get there in the end as always and then we're going to put a grass roof on um, I'm not a huge fan of these grass roof pieces so I always cover them up with loads of other grass uh, and they do sort of work once you cover them up they're a nice little sort of bed for it to give it a green color and a nice texture rather than just the concrete um, and yeah, that's pretty much the uh, the shelter done. Obviously some more work to do on the inside, but outside wise, I am pretty happy with this. So we'll move on and take care of the next part of the build, which is to get the paddock looking as realistic as possible. So I used to really struggle with um, trying to get the, uh, you know, any sort of large expanse of grass to look realistic. Partly I think that was because of the lack of plants in the game and partly just because I wasn't very good at it. Um, but I think I've got better at that, uh, especially recently, looking um, at a lot of people like Haribo and Romana Palacios and how they sort of do things like this. And I think I've got better at making them look realistic. It takes a lot of, um, it takes a lot of practice. One of the key things is to sink all the plants into the ground so you can sort of see the shadows from up here. Uh, so I will go back in and sink most of those into the ground so just the ends of the grass and things are showing um, and then we will move on uh, or in fact now we will move on to creating some education boards for the guests so where these um, pieces that I've rotated don't quite come together I'm going to cover all of them up with these little stands which are going to have different information signs on them some of them will be the habitat boards for the horses um, there will be some signs telling people to not to touch the animals not to feed them and things like that and it just looks really nice all the way around here this little uh, shape that I've made 
uh, which sort of does double duty of covering up the ugly bits and also providing the guests with information. Put some air conditioning on here just to have uh, something there really. We'll put a few decals in around the walls because I like those. Um, speaking of likes, uh, if you enjoy this video, then uh, please remember to like and if you haven't already, subscribe so you can see more of them. Um, we're going to finish this wall off here, put a little feeder in for the horses, not a real feeder, that will come in uh, in the paddock itself, just something to make these walls look a bit more interesting. And that's pretty much the paddock done once I finish tidying up the plants. So I'm going to do some work on the mountain area itself, um, just to get all these paths joined up with the little courtyard in front of the restaurant. And that's the Pejamowski's horse paddock done. So thank you so much for watching as always. I'll be back hopefully next week um, with the last habitat in the mountain area of the zoo, which I've already started working on and I'm really, really liking it. It's only small, but I'm trying to make it perfectly formed. And I'll see you then for some more Tecton Zoo. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.